हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम रीमा गुप्ता फ्रॉम यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ डेली टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द मॉड्यूल दैट इज सिरमिक सस्पेंशन इन प्रोसेसिंग फ्रॉम द पेपर प्रोसेसिंग ऑफ सिरमिक्स सो स्टूडेंट्स लेट सी वट वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न इन दिस मॉड्यूल सो फर्स्ट वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट वेंड वॉल फोर्सेस इन सिरमिक सस्पेंशन इन प्रोसेसिंग then we will be moving towards stabilizations in suspensions then electrical double layer then we will be learning about the interaction energy between two particles and moving towards steric stabilization and surfactants so many ceramic forming processes starts with suspension slurries or paste of ceramic particles therefore in slip casting and tape casting suspension of powder in water or some other liquid are used in extrusion and even injection molding paste of ceramic powders are also employed so in this module we will be discussing about suspensions and their interaction energy so in all these cases it is necessary that the suspension or the paste should be stable that is the particle should not coagulate or otherwise in a suspension the particles would settle down and the processing can not be done further now we will discuss ceramic suspension in processing from the elementary sedimentation theory the time required for a particle of diameter d to settle through a height h in a liquid of viscosity eta is given as t is equal to 18 h eta divided by d square rho p minus rho l times g here rho p is the density of particle rho l is the density of liquid g is the acceleration due to gravity h is the height d is the diameter of particle and eta is viscosity the agglomeration of the particles that is their together clustering increases the effective value of d and so the time for which the particles can stay in suspension is reduced the time for settling can be increased by preventing the agglomeration of the particles or by increasing the viscosity of the liquid therefore the particles in suspension undergo brownian motion and therefore this can get attracted to one another by the van der waal forces and flocculate flocculate here means cluster together resulting in increase in d and decrease in t therefore the suspension stability is lost now here we will discuss about van der waal's forces the particles in suspension undergo brownian motion which we have already discussed so if two particles come well close to each other the van der waal forces between the particles may cause them to attach together and form a dimmer further addition of particles would result in larger agglomeration which we have discussed in the previous slide so let us recall that van der waal forces is a weak force between the molecules it is comparatively long range force while the molecular forces becomes operative when the atoms approach within about 1 angstrom of each other the van der waal forces become appreciable at a distance of 1 nanometer between the molecules so one method of calculating the van der waal attraction energy between the particles is to sum up the attraction energy between two molecules at a time 
So this method is due to Hamaker. In Hamaker's method, the dispersion attraction between the molecules in the two particles is summed up taking one molecule at a time. Therefore, the interaction energy between two particles separated by vacuum is given by phi 1 2 is equal to pi square rho 1 rho 2 lambda 1 2 integration for a close contour dv1 again integration dv2 divided by pi square r12 to power 6. Here r12 is the distance between the particles. Rho 1 and rho 2 are the densities of two particles. Lambda 1, 2 is the London constant between them. dv1 and dv2 are the volume elements of the two particles of volume v1 and v2. The quantity before the double integral is called the Hamaker constant A12 for the two particles. So here A12 becomes pi square rho 1 rho 2 lambda 1 2. The Hamaker's constant is a function of only the two materials and the medium separating them. So to illustrate the values of Hamaker constant for some ceramics in water are in 10 to power minus 30 joules of order. So for TiO2 it is 26 into 10 to power minus 30. For zirconium oxide it is 13 into 10 to power minus 30 joules and similarly for Al2O3 and MgO. So in this slide we will be discussing about Van der Waals forces between particles in continuation to previous slide. So the Van der Waals attraction energy between two particles depend on the material they made of, their shapes and medium separating them. For two spherical particles each of radius A with their centers separated by capital R then the attraction energy is given as delta G is equal to A times small a divided by 12 into r minus 2a. Here a is the Hamaker constant, r minus 2a is very small that is the particles are very close to each other. So the Van der Waals attraction energy for a sphere and a plate which are very close to each other is given as Delta G is equal to A times small a divided by 6 times R minus small a which in turns become capital A into small a divided by 6 into delta X. Therefore, the Van der Waal attraction for the macroscopic bodies such as particles decay as reciprocal of the distance between them. So therefore, in the case of a larger and a smaller particle, the larger particle behaves as a plate that is exerts more attraction. Moreover, the smaller particles are attracted more towards the larger particles than towards each other. As mentioned earlier, in a suspension of particles, the particles are constantly undergoing the Brownian motion. So, whenever two particles approach within the range of Van der Waal forces, there is a finite chance that there will be attachment of each other. So, this assembly can further grow with time as more particles join it. So, eventually, the agglomerate becomes large and settle down in suspension that is suspension becomes unstable. So to keep the suspension stable, it is essential that the particles 
be prevented from approaching each other closer than the wind walls range which is of the order of nanometer so this is accomplished by two techniques one is called electrostatic stabilization and the other is called steric stabilization so in electrostatic stabilization an electrical double layer forms around the particles when the particles approach each other these double particles begin to interpenetrate which leads to a larger increase in energy and so that the particles are prevented from approaching to each other however in steric stabilization there are polymeric molecules adsorbed on the surface of the particles some parts of these molecules project out from the particle surface so as the particles approach these molecules begin to interpenetrate which again lead to an increase in energy and so a close approach of particles is not favored so in the following sections these two stabilization techniques will be discussed electrostatic stabilization as mentioned above in the electrostatic stabilization an electrical double layer is formed around each particle in a suspension for this to happen the particles must have a charge on the surface to start with there are several mechanism by which the surface of a particle may get charged here we describe the one which is applicable to the oxide particles suspended in water so the particles of oxides such as silica invariably acquire an electric charge on their surface if suspended in water this can be observed in an electrophoresis experiment the suspension is placed in a chamber equipped with two electrodes when a dc voltage is applied to the electrodes the particles are observed to move towards one of the electrodes so if the polarity is reversed the direction of motion of particles is also reversed this shows that all the particles have the same type of charge in case of silica particle in water this charge is negative the reason the oxide particles get charged in water is the following in an aqueous suspension the particles of oxide can preferentially absorb oh minus group or h plus ions so the reaction is shown here moh plus oh minus results in mo minus plus h2o whereas in acidic media it is moh plus h plus gives mo h2 plus so depending on the ph the particles can acquire either a negative or a net positive charge at a low ph value where the concentration of the h plus ions is high the particles has mostly h plus ions absorbed on its surface and so is positively charged while at the high ph value where the concentration of oh minus ions is very large it is mostly the oh minus ions which are absorbed on the surface and so the particle is negatively charged at a certain ph value the particles has no net charge so this ph is called point of zero charge which is known as pzc the particles have a positive charge below this ph and a negative charge above this ph so the electrical potential due to the charge on the particle surface drops exponentially as one moves away from the particle surface into the surrounding liquid so this potential is measured in an electrophoresis experiment 
and when a potential is applied to the electrodes the particle move a smaller layer of the liquid adheres to the particle as it moves that is the shear of the liquid occurs at a small distance removed from the surface of the particle the electrophoresis experiment yields the potential at this point and this is called zeta potential and it is given by zeta is equal to f h eta nu divided by epsilon r epsilon naught times e here zeta is the zeta potential eta is the viscosity of liquid nu is the velocity of particles in electrophoresis experiment e is the electric field applied during the experiment epsilon naught is the permittivity of vacuum epsilon r is the relative permittivity of the liquid so this relative permittivity of liquid is 78.54 for water at 298 kelvin moreover the fh is a factor which depends on the particle size which is 1.5 for smaller particles which are smaller than the thickness of the electrical double layer and 1 for particles larger than 100 times the thickness of the double layer now let's discuss the isoelectric point the zeta potential is positive at low ph where the particles are positively charged which goes through zero as the ph is increased and becomes negative after that as shown schematically for alumina particles in this figure so you can see that the value of zeta potential slightly decreases and then drastically decreases further the ph at which the zeta potential is zero is called the isoelectric point and this point is very much close to pzc where pzc is point of zero charge now let's see the isoelectric point of some compounds which are tabulated here so you can see that on the left hand side there are various materials and on the right hand side these are isoelectric point of corresponding material so for quartz that is sio2 the isoelectric point is 2.0 for zirconia it is 7.6 for titanium it is 5.7 for rutile and 6.2 for anatase however the isoelectric point for various materials are mentioned and it can be seen for magnesia that is mgo the isoelectric point is 12.4 which is very much high electrical double layer so the figure on the left hand side shows the schematic representation of the electrical double layer so a suspension always contains ions having charge opposite to the charge absorbed on the particle surface because it has to be electrically neutral these ions are called counter ions some of these counter ions adsorb on the particle surface and most of them form a diffuse layer around the particle due to a thermal motion the layer of the strongly adsorb counter ions and strongly polarized water molecules on the particle surface is called helmholtz or stern layer the layer of charge on the particle surface that is stern layer and the diffuse layer of counter ions around the particles is called electrical double layer it is shown in this figure that the two layers are together where one is the charge of the particle surface and the another is the diffusive layer forming the electrical double layer thickness of the electrical double layer now let's discuss the thickness of it as mentioned earlier the potential drops exponentially 
as we can see from this figure that potential drops exponentially as one moves away from the particle surface. The potential can be expressed as psi is equal to psi naught exponential minus kx where psi is the potential at a distance x from the particle surface and psi naught is the potential at the particle surface. The potential at a distance 1 minus k from the particle surface is equal to 1 by e of the potential at the particle surface. The quantity 1 by k is called delta, the thickness of the double layer. So, the thickness of the double layer delta is given as 1 by k and in turn k square is given as k square is equal to e square divided by epsilon kt into summation over i zi square ni infinity where delta is the thickness of double layer. Here e is the electronic charge zi is the charge on the ith ion in the suspension ni infinity is the concentration of the ith ion at a point far removed from the particle surface. K is the Boltzmann constant and epsilon is equal to epsilon r into epsilon naught where epsilon r is relative permittivity and epsilon naught is the permittivity of air and T is the temperature. Now let's discuss the interaction energy between two particles. Here in this figure you can see the variation of electrostatic repulsion energy, Van der Waals attraction energy and the net interaction energy as a function of distance between the surface of two particles. So let us look the plot of the net interaction energy as the two particles initially far removed from each other's approach they first counter a shallow minimum that is the particles can get weakly bound to each other at this separation. But usually the minimum is very shallow and can be easily overcome by thermal fluctuations. So this is not sufficient to hold the particles together. As the particles approach closer, they encounter a steep increase in energy. So if the height of this energy barrier is sufficiently high, the particles cannot overcome it and so stay separated. In this case, the particles do not flocculate and suspension is stable. However, if the barrier height is small, then they can overcome the barrier and after the peak, there is a steep decrease in energy which means that particles get rather strongly bounded to each other and so flocculate. The steep minimum after the peak is called primary minimum and in this case the suspension will not be stable and the particle will settle down. Electrostatic Stabilization Parameters so the stability of the suspension is greater when the double layer thickness is larger. From the previous discussion, we have seen that the factors which control this thickness are first is a high zeta potential. So high zeta potential leads to a thicker double layer. The zeta potential can be increased by keeping the pH as far away from the isoelectric point as feasible. Second, the thickness of double layer. So the thickness of double layer decreases on adding electrolytes. The concentration of the electrolytes should therefore be low. And the third parameter is particle size. So as the particle size increases, both the attraction 
and the repulsive interaction energy is increases but the attraction energy increases much faster so it is difficult to stabilize small particles by electrostatic stabilization and in the case of small particles steric stabilization is used steric stabilization as discussed earlier the electrostatic stabilization is not effective for all small particles also in it strong acids or bases need to be employed which may not be desirable so in ways of this the steric stabilization is the preferred technique to stabilize the suspension in this a long chain molecule is adsorbed on the particle surface and the part of the molecule is adsorbed on the particle and a major part of it projects out from the particle surface if the solvent is good solvent for a polymer then there is a decrease in enthalpy as the polymer chain comes in contact with the solvent this is clearly shown in the figure on the left hand side so in this case the polymer tends to open up to maximize its contact with the solvent now if two particles with their projecting molecules approach each other the enthalpy and the entropy are changed because the molecules are now partly in contact with each other in place of the solvent resulting in the increase in enthalpy also now the chains are constrained by each other and so can assume less number of configurations than when they are only surrounded by the solvent so the overall configuration entropy increases so the net change in free energy is given as delta g is equal to delta h minus t delta s so as delta h is positive delta s is also negative there is an increase in the free energy as the particles come close to each other this prevents the particle to come within the range of van der waal forces and so stabilize the suspension a minimum chain length is needed so let's discuss this point so the figure on the left hand side a shows the chain length is small so as two particles approach each other they encounter steric barrier represented by the vertical line at l1 at this distance the van der waals interaction energy curve has a large minimum which can not be overcome by kt so that the dispersion flocculates however the figure b the steric barrier is at l2 where the attractive interaction is small and can be easily overcome by thermal fluctuations so the suspension can be stabilized in this case where a potential well of about minus 3 kt is sufficient to flocculate the particles so a minimum length of polymer chain must be projecting out for steric stabilization the van der waals attraction energy between the particles increases as the particles approach each other if the particles are able to approach so closely that this energy is much larger than the thermal energy kt then the particles would not be able to overcome the van der waal attraction and flocculation would result so projecting molecules must start to interpenetrate to each other and produce strong steric barrier before the particles comes in the range of van der waal attraction now let's see some of the examples of surfactants so these are the examples which are shown on the left hand side these examples are of anionic and a cationic surfactant a molecules which are used for steric stabilization 
are called surfactants they are long chain molecules one need of the molecule is non polar so the examples of such groups are methylene ethylene groups and the other end of the molecule is either polar or is ionized and so is charged the examples of polar groups are hydroxyl carboxyl sulfonate sulfate ammonium ammonia polyoxyethylene quaternary ammonia etc where r can be h or alkyl groups that is ch3 the polar or the charged end is attracted to the polar liquids such as water while the non polar chain is attracted to the non polar liquids water is an example of polar liquid so in a suspension of particles in water the polar group projects out from the surface and the non polar groups is adsorbed on the particle surface so when the polarity is produced due to the ionization of the group at one end then these surfactants are called ionic surfactants if the end has a negative charge then the surfactant is called anionic surfactant in case of positive charge it is called cationic surfactant anionic surfactant are commonly used in ceramic processing and several polymers also act as surfactants a very well known example is polyvinyl alcohol which is partially hydrolyzed polyvinyl acetate which is generally used as surfactant in ceramic processing so students let us summarize what we have learned in this module so we have learned that many ceramic forming processes start with suspension slurry paste of ceramic powders then we have read that the suspension must be stable for sufficient time to carry out the processing so there is a need to have repulsive interaction between the particles to overcome the van der waal attractions so this can be done either by electrostatic stabilization or static stabilization this can be done either by electrostatic stabilization or steric stabilization so in electrostatic stabilization the particle surface must be charged and this may need highly acidic or basic solution which may be undesirable also the suspension of very small particles cannot be stabilized by electrostatic stabilization so the another option is steric stabilization so the another option is steric stabilization more commonly used is this technique only so in this suitable polymer surfactants are adsorbed on the particle surface and in this generally ionic surfactants in which one end has an ionizable generally ionic surfactants in which one end has ionizable group are used in ceramic processing and one of the best example is pva which we have already discussed in the previous slides thank you